Hey everybody, Coleman Alderson for GardensHall.com. I'd like to begin a series with you all about our fall garden, and this will be just the first initial part. Uh, we are quite in a dry season now. We had a little rain last night, lots of sound and fury, but signifying only about an eighth of an inch. So there was relief, but um, this is a dry period right now and we're having to water. Thank heavens we have a system here that is our drip irrigation system on a timer that works really great. It's a sort of, you know, leave and forget. You do have to check it now and then. You know, it's not totally foolproof, but every now and then um, you go out and you check it. But for the most part, it's just been a, a wonderful thing to have. Now, we're here, this is toward the end of uh, September. We're definitely into fall now. Temperatures have yet to drop but we are growing okra in leaps and bounds. And nowadays we're going out and we're harvesting literally huge handfuls of okra, bringing them in and devising all kinds of ways to prepare it. So uh, I wanted to show you guys how tall these plants are getting. This is a burgundy variety. And uh, as you can see, there, there's a pod here. It has a flower up near the top that it means it's going to keep growing and growing and uh, I'm guessing this is about eight feet tall that's that's my best guess on it since I'm close to six feet um, and it's interesting because when they they start to some of them will send up these little side shoots and you see this little guy here it's going to start producing little pods as well it'll bloom and and depending on the weather of course but this is a, a burgundy variety. It's just such a beautiful plant, you know, ornamental wise. Um, and uh, it's, it, the flavor of the, I can't, can't distinguish the, the difference between the flavor of a red pod and the traditional green pod, but it's, it also is pretty to have mixed into a dish. Um, now, this here is called Gold Coast and it's really tall. I'm going to try harvesting just one pod. And by the way, you have to stay ahead of these guys because you could come out and in no time you would have a pod 12 inches or longer. And when they get that big, they're just not as good. Um, we've noticed that the Gold Coast in, in comparison with uh, the other types tends to be a little chubby. But uh, flavor's great, it's tender, flavorful, all that good stuff. But it, it tends to be the fatter of the varieties, even fatter than the Clemson Spineless. Um, moving on over here, we have the dwarfs, and now I'm calling them semi-dwarfs. This here is Baby Bubba, and here's a pod that's ready to uh, harvest. And I would prefer using scissors of some kind, but th this works okay. But you can see the girth. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, who are those guys? Mutt and Jeff? <laughs> and of each yeah, comparison. Th this is Baby Bubba and this is Gold Coast. Okay. okay, see the contrast there. Next to it, we have, uh, let's see if we can find one. Yeah, this here is the Cajun Jewel. Now the Cajun Jewel, was touted as being um, a dwarf, well, not dwarf, but could grow in a container, and indeed it is growing in containers. It's just quite a bit taller. It looks like it's it's stopping out at about um, at about five or six feet, which you know is is pretty cool, uh, and it has held up. Here's another one. Now this, see how this could almost, if I gave it a longer time, could almost get away from us and I mean it would by the end of the day by the end of the day it could be that long <laughs> they grow a couple because they, they could grow a couple inches a day it's wild here is a baby they have bubble. incredible flowers they're in the hibiscus family oh right? yeah and the incredible beautiful flowers yellow pale yellow with a deep burgundy interior it, it really is it's like a ornamental plant with the bonus of you get these edible pods oh, you know what we forgot to show the bark on let me just back oh, sure. just a little yeah. um we forgot to show the incredible beauty of the red um stems and trunk yeah and the flower also has um, a red reddish 
more of a register center than, right. um, than. than the others. So it's just, you know, oh yeah. It's a, the Cajun jewel, right? And look over here. See, this is a side shoot. Now we're getting oh, yeah, side so shoots. Sorry for the shake of the camera, folks. Uh, There's a red. Can it, before you trim it, let me get it. Yeah. Okay, great. Beautiful. And the only solution, other than maybe carrying some sort of ladder device down here, is um, you just bend them over and do it as gently as possible. Excuse me. <laughs> That's dog. our dog. <laughs> He wants to be out. What I do is I just kind of walk it up with my fingers and uh, hold it and clip. And there you go. Look at this. This one almost got away. This is just about, wow. I mean, this is one plant, guys. So we're really hitting the, the strong season. Now, yeah. this would probably be best just to make sure you, you cut it up in the slices and be fried up. It's a little beyond... Uh, where we like to pick them, okay? And they're a little easier to find than normally than the green, which is one of uh, the yeah. and they're really pretty in dishes. Absolutely. Um, and here's it's another tall one. a beautiful taller. garden plant, just ornamentally. This could even be used in an edible landscape as an ornamental and oh, often yeah. possibly get um, by your right. COA, your home order <laughs> owner's organization right. uh, codes uh, just because it's a beautiful plant in and of itself. Yeah, we, we really enjoy these, and mixing them in with the green ones is really great. Um, so that's okra, and I still have a lot more to pick out here. Like I say, this will be bringing in some big handfuls or an armload of this at this point in time. And we have just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have about 20 plants right now. 20 okra plants? Yep, okay. of various varieties. Okay, yeah, that's, um, are those in there? <coughs> yeah, we have some in the interior garden as well. Um, are they a variety similar to these varieties? Yeah, we have one burgundy and mostly Clemson spineless, which is your standard variety. Um, and they're great too. I mean, they, it's all great. We just like to, you know us, we mix up and experiment and stuff, so. Uh, and we love it. Anything else on the okra before we close? No, uh, just, well, here's one thing, a cautionary note about, uh, let's see, these things can hide from you on, particularly on the baby bubba. Yeah, Several times bushy. I've come out, you see down here, we're starting to get flowers and okra. Look at this. See this? Well, it was hiding. It was yeah. hiding. Yeah. They're so, so well camoed. I'm going to go ahead and cut it, so... In terms of flavor, we haven't noticed much difference, and so from that standpoint, it really hasn't made a difference, right? No, but the deal is, you can grow this. A lot of people say, I don't have room to grow okra, but look, this isn't, Yeah. this is just a little terracotta kind of uh, tile pot, and, uh, excuse me, <coughs> and um, it's just got a little bit of soil, like in there, and it goes down into the ground, but it is excellent for growing on a patio or growing in a garden with limited space. I mean, we're getting a lot of production out yeah. of these little plants. Right. Well, that's it for the okra. Okay. And, um, so we'll stop this video and start with another one. Yeah, I think this is a, a great opener for part one. It's our fall garden, and we're out here doing it, gardening away. Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. Thanks.